Hello world, Geriatric Geek here. How in the heck are you? I hope you're doing great. Today's another another beautiful day. It's uh, Monday, the 16th of November, 2020. Um, hey, I hope you're doing good. The old geek is doing good. I'm staying safe, you know. But uh, as you already can tell, I've been out. That's right. I went over to Walmart's Black Friday movie sale. Um, they started, they did it on Saturday. Of course, with all the, the um, issues with COVID and all that, they've had to stretch out their Black Friday offerings. And uh, I understand. And, uh, but that being said, uh, you know, this wasn't one of my favorite Black Friday movie halls uh, or movie sales. Um, truth be known, uh, most everything that they had out there, I've all already had or uh, have no interest in. They had, did have a whole lot of uh, Disney stuff for, for cheap, like nine ninety nine. I think a lot of Blu-rays, a lot of Disney stuff. Of course, I've got most of those already for the grandkids. But anyway, um, yeah, I you know, I found a few things. I think there was like, I don't know, 19, 20 titles I found. Uh, some, most of it, I'll be honest with you, most of the stuff is for someone else other than myself and, you know, may probably make gifts out of them. But, uh, we're going to talk a little bit. I'll show you a little bit of what I got so that you'll know what's out there. Um, so if you need catalog titles, you, you probably ought to head over to your Walmart. I went this morning again, uh, this is Monday morning. So I went again this morning at seven and they still had almost everything that, uh, that the person could want out there. They still had the shippers uh, sitting there, and uh, they were basically still full of full of movies. So head on over to your Walmart if you just if you're putting it off or you're. Uh, but if you're interested, get over there. There, there's a few things to be had still. I suspect, at least here in uh, North Las Vegas. So anyway, let's get started. Let me show you a little bit about what I picked up and uh, uh, what they have. So here we go. This one is for me and my wife. This is something her, uh, her and I can watch together. And uh, I've heard good things about it. So I, well, I probably would not have gotten it, but it was very inexpensive. As you can see, I still have the promo thing on there. The King of Staten Island. Uh, my wife loves Saturday Night Live, and this has um, Pete Davidson in it from Saturday Night Live. It's directed by uh, Judd Apatow. Yeah, so I know I really know nothing about it other than it's a comedy and kind of a life situation thing going on. Uh, it's R-rated, 137 minutes from 2020, comedy drama, and uh, I might be interested because it looks like a stoner flick. Maybe we'll see. Uh, if you guys have seen this, let me know down below. Is it pretty good? Did you like it? Um, so yeah. The King of Staten Island. I don't remember the prices. I'm not going to try and even guess, you guys. But uh, suffice it to say, this one was, I think it was like five bucks, maybe. So, anyway, there you go. I'm going to stash these things. Got way too much stuff in here in front of me. You can't see. <laughs> anyway, next up. I did buy a few uh, Disney things that... I want to, uh, things that I considered really good and that um, I wanted to share. Well, they're not really, I guess they're Disney. Disney Pixar. So WALL-E. WALL-E. It's G-rated, 98 minutes from 2008. This, in my opinion, is one of the best of Pixar. This is probably one or two, number one or two, uh, as far as Pixar. Uh, a great love story, really. So I, I picked this up for, um, it also has the digital copy in it. So I got this for real cheap. Uh, I think it was $9. I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah. So this is going into a uh, Christmas gift for one of our family members here pretty soon. They've got kids that are just about the age where they can appreciate this kind of movie. So yeah, I'm happy to have this one. Of course, you know. 
while he was trying to clean up our trash, right? So, anyway, yeah, I got that one. Very cool. Another one I, this is not going in that box, but uh, something for one of my other grandkids is the Crudes. PG rated, 98 minutes from 2013. I, I just really love the animation in this thing. I, you know, it's one of the best animated movies we've ever seen, right? But I, it is pretty good. And I kind of I like the crudes, kind of because it's kind of crude. But anyway, if you guys like this one, let me know down below what you thought. This is available, very inexpensive. I don't know. I think that was like five bucks, maybe four bucks. And then another one from Pixar, Disney Pixar, I should say, Ratatouille. G-rated 111 minutes from 2007. Who doesn't like comedy about art, food, and rats in Paris, right? What's not to like? This is in my top 10 of uh, Disney Pixar Ratatouille movies. Right there. Uh, so, yeah, I like Ratatouille. So, i got to say, Wally's probably number one in Toy Story for me. And then Ratatouille somewhere down the line a little bit further, but uh, hey, I know uh, I know my grandkids will like that, so we picked that up for a family member. That's going to go in that that other. Uh, <clears throat> these two are going together. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, next up, this is something uh, something for my wife actually, and uh, I'll probably sit down and watch. I've watched a least one episode of it but uh just didn't have time at the time to watch all of it so american gods season one she likes this one so i thought what the heck let me pick these up maybe she'll want to rewatch them it's not rated 2017 seven hours and 29 minutes worth in here of course it's a drama fantasy mystery uh reviews are really good for this kind of thing and uh my wife reviewed it she loves it so that's all i needed and they also had season two of American Gods. This was put out by Stars. Evidently, this season is not as good as season one. That's at least the, what the reviews say. But uh, you know, I think my wife likes it, so that's for her. Next up, this is something definitely for me. I'm kind of bummed that they didn't have season one. I, to be honest with you, I've never even heard of this before. But uh, it's on stars called Da Vinci Demons. This is season two. It's not rated. It's got 548 minutes worth of, of uh, uh, 548 minutes worth on there. It's from the executive producer David S. Goyer, screenwriter of Man of Steel, 2013. It's basically the untold story of Leonardo da Vinci. Evidently, there's three seasons, and uh, it gets really good reviews. So, uh, who you know, I'm kind of interested in see what's going on with old Leonardo when he was younger. What a what a genius, right? Florence is thrown into chaos in the wake of the Pazzi conspiracy, and Leonardo da Vinci must push the limits of his mind and body to defend the city against the forces of Rome. When the dust settles, friends are buried and rivalries inflamed. While the what? Medicis go to unthinkable lengths to deal with new threats, Da Vinci continues on his quest to find the fabled Book of Leaves and uncover the secret history of his mother. He'll come to realize that he has lethal competition in his quest. New enemies who may be even worse than the forces of Pope Sixtus. His search will take him to faraway lands and force him to reevaluate everything he knew about the world and his own history. The journey begins. So, if you guys have seen this, let me know down below what you thought. Um, I know it's this looks very interesting, and I, I, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit of historic fact, and I'll probably enjoy it. But we'll see. This I picked up because. It was very inexpensive, and every once in a while I like to watch a little John Wayne and Western classics. John Wayne collection. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine flicks on there. We have Hondo, the man who shot Liberty Valance, True Grit, The Shootist, McClintock, The Sons of Katie Elder, Rio Lobo, Big Jake, and El Dorado. I've seen probably four or five of those. And hey, I want to revisit them, so it's all right here. One little package, very inexpensive at Walmart. Next up, this is definitely something for me. Uh, the Complete Collection. I have a few of these seasons already, but I, I thought, well, what the heck? This thing's very inexpensive, put out by Lionsgate, called Black Sales. Black Sales, not rated 2014. It ran from 2014 to 2017. Got 35 hours worth on there. Also on stars. Prequel to. Uh, this is basically a prequel to uh, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson's uh, Treasure Island. Who doesn't love pirates? You know? Gets really good reviews. I, uh, this is something I've been wanting to watch for a while. I, like I said, I do have one, I think, one season. But. Uh, Glad to have all, well, all four seasons, it looks like. Excuse me, I said three. That's four seasons. Golden Age of Piracy collides with encroaching civilization and four action-packed seasons of black sails. The action begins in 1715 on New Providence Island, lawless and overrun with history's most notorious pirate captains, the most feared among them, the complicated, driven Captain Flint. Smuggler's beautiful daughter Flint schemes to win the ultimate prize and keep his adventures at bay, his adversaries at bay, excuse me. But enemies abound in the form of infamous Captain Charles Vane, the Royal Navy, Flint's fellow cutthroats, his own inner demons, and the exiled legend whose name brings on the shivers a man called Long John Silver. Little pirate action. I like it. All in one little pack. Very inexpensive. And trying to complete my Doctor Who series, so I got the complete 12th series. I believe this has got the uh, uh, the 13th Doctor in it. It has 10 episodes. I find this show to be rather complicated to follow sometimes, so uh, but I, I do like it. You know, it's, it's really out there and right up my alley, so you guys like Doctor Who? And if so, what's your favorite Doctor? Let me know down below. Space for All. Jodie Whittaker, globally, globally acclaimed 13th Doctor, returns for her sophomore season, a brand new set of action-packed epic adventures spanning space and time. Accompanied by her three best friends, Ryan, Yaz, and Graham, the 13th Doctor, 13th Doctor is set to face her toughest challenges yet. Featuring terrifying monsters, old and new, figures from Earth's history, and an eclectic set of guest stars. This series will delve deeper into the hearts of the 13th Doctor. Cinematic visuals, compelling characters, and a host of alien threats all collide in new episodes shot through the Doctor Who's trademark warmth, humor, and heart. I like Doctor Who. I hope you guys do too. It's really pretty good. Check it out if you're into really spacey, crazy stuff. I picked this up because eh, my wife likes these kind of things, and I probably will never, ever watch it, but uh, four movies, Christmas selection. Yeah, Marie, I was thinking of you when I picked this up. You and uh, Joe, so a little Christmas stuff. This is for my wife. Christmas Lost and Found, The Christmas Pact, My Christmas Inn, and A Twist of Christmas. They had a, they had a few Christmas movies there. Um, uh, you know, I got this to see if the wife would like it. She says, oh, good, she'll check it out. So I'm happy she liked this one. Next up, Men Go to Battle, Women Wage War in The White Queen. The White Queen from 2013, non-rated, 580 minutes. It's a drama. This is set in the 15th century England. Of course, the battle for power. And it's loosely fact-based, evidently. 
White Queen is riveting portrayal of one of the most dramatic and turbulent times in English history. A story of love and lust, seduction and deception, betrayal and murder. It is uniquely told through the perspective of three different yet equally relentless women. Elizabeth Woodville, Margaret Beaufort, Beaufort and Anne Neville. In their quest for power, they will scheme, manipulate, and seduce their way onto the English throne. The year is 14, or excuse me, 1464, and war over who is the rightful king has been ravaging throughout England. It is a bitter dispute between two sides of the same family, the House of York and the House of Lancaster. And these three ruthless women are each desperately vying for the crown. So yeah, my wife will enjoy that one. Again, she likes that. Uh, she likes that early English stuff. And speaking of early English stuff, to follow up, the White Princess. Seven hours worth of goodies on here from 2017. Of course, these were TV miniseries, historical drama, and they the reviews say this is not as good as The Queen. But uh, I wanted to pick it up so my wife could uh, could have it and check it out. It's drawn from the novel of the same name by Philippa Gregory. The White Princess is a tale of power, family, love, and betrayal, charting one of the most tumultuous times in British his history, uniquely from the point of view of the women. The tempestuous marriage between Elizabeth of York and King Henry VII officially marks the conclusion of the War of the Roses, but the real battle for the throne is far from over. Yeah, there you go. Next up, this one's for me because I haven't seen this yet, but uh, this is uh, also on stars. What is this, the complete third? Oh. Stickers. Drive me crazy. So this is the complete third season of Spartacus. I believe I have the second season already. I do not have the first. So as soon as I get that one, I'll go ahead and watch it. Uh, this is 563 minutes worth, not rated. Of course, it's about the old gladiator leading his uprising against the uh, Roman Empire. So yeah, I'm going to get the uh, first season and then I'll be able to check out this Spartacus. If you've seen it, let me know what you thought. Claudius Glauber is dead. Many months have passed since his defeat in the rebel army led by Spartacus and his generals Crixus. With the rebels' numbers uh, swelling to thousands of freed slaves, Spartacus more determined than ever to bring down the entire Roman Republic. Good luck with that, Spartacus. Hey, something else for my little ones around. And something I've wanted to watch for a while. I have, excuse me, I, my nose is running a little bit. But Ryan Reynolds as Detective Pikachu. Detective Pikachu. PG 2000, what, 19, 104 minutes. You know, it gets okay reviews, but uh, you know what? My kids, they, not my kids, but uh, my grandkids, they, they enjoy these uh Pikachu and Pokemon kind of thing. So I picked that up, have it here for them if they ever want to watch. Next up, this is something for me. Yay. This is complete seasons one to three. I had not picked up any of these yet, so happy to have this one. Fear the Walking Dead. Actually, the prequel to The Walking Dead. This one took place over in Los Angeles rather than Atlanta, as you guys may or may not know. But, uh, this is really this takes place really before they even knew how to uh, how to fight the, the zombies, you know, how, what what worked against them. So I'm happy to have this 11 disc set put out by AMC, of course. Taking place is the same taking place in the same universe as The Walking Dead. The gritty fear of The Walking Dead explores the beginnings of the undead apocalypse through the lens of a fractured Los Angeles family. 
So I'm probably, I think I'm in the first part of season two on this. I have it on digital. I wanted it on, uh, wanted it on physical so I could have it in case it ever goes away from digital. You never know. So those are the first three. And then I picked up the fifth. Couldn't find the fourth, darn it. Let me know down below if you guys, if any of you guys have been to Walmart and seen the fourth series. Did they have that out there? And if so, let me know. So yeah, here's the, uh, complete fifth series. And there we're in the, currently in the sixth ser sixth, uh, season right now, I do believe. Um, of course, The Walking Dead's in season 10. There's 20 more episodes, 20, no, 10 more episodes to hit in uh, 2021, I understand. And I saw this, and I thought, you know what, I, I like Gerald, but Gerard, Gerard Butler. So I picked up his five film collection here. It's got Angel Has Fallen, which I ha already have and have seen and liked. Hunter Killer, I've, I have and not seen. But all the rest of these I've never seen. So, Law Abiding Citizen, The Vanishing, and Gods of Egypt. There's the back. So, yeah, Gerard, Gerard Butler. Of course, Morgan Freeman's in that Angel Has Fallen, and Nick Nolte, and Jada Pink. And, uh, that was a good one. So I thought, hey, I, I want to watch the rest of them. I find uh, most of his movies pretty pretty engaging. Now, another one for me. They say this, ter this is terrible. Let me know down below what you think. Batman, Batwoman, first season, 2019 TV series. It's terrible reviews. People I know that have watched it didn't like it, but uh, I wanted to check it out. I'll make up my own decision. Make my own decision, I guess. Let me know what you guys thought. And finally, from Wally World. <clears throat> Notifications going off all over the place. A five-part miniseries in, entitled Chernobyl. Chernobyl. 321 minutes from 2019. HBO put this out. Of course, Chernobyl happened like in 1985, 86. Um, uh, you say on here, yeah, 86, when that Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded in the Soviet Union. What a mess that was. And so this basically tells that story. And, uh, evidently it's pretty close to true. Um, I've read a couple reviews. One was by a lady whose husband actually drove the bus, uh, evacuating folks from the, from the area. And what he's, he says, it looked, you know, really, really close to what really happened. So, hey, I can't wait to uh, check this out. I understand Russia it may be making their own. So I'd, it'd be interesting to compare and contrast this to that. So if you've seen this, let me know down below if you enjoyed. But, uh, yeah, I thought, what the heck, I'll check that out. Now, the movie Chernobyl, the horror movie, that was cool. I like that one. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but you ought to check it out. It's Based on this, because of this, but uh, it's a, it's just a it's a novelization or a fictionalization of, of what happened, of course. So anyway, that's it. That's it for the Black Friday deals, at least at Walmart. Uh, I have a feeling Best Buy may be better this year. So uh, when they stick their stuff out, I I understand there are some shippers already out, but they won't let you buy them, kind of thing. Uh, at least right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go over Best Buy and probably Target and check them out uh, when they put their stuff out. But uh, So, let me know what you guys picked up. If you picked up something different than I did, let me know down below. If you've seen any of these uh, movies or TV, mostly TV stuff, huh? Uh, stars, mostly stars stuff. Let me know down below if you have uh, if you liked them. Don't, whatever. So anyway, hey, you guys, thanks for watching. I do so appreciate it. If you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Speaking of subscribers, that's right. If you're a subscriber of mine, I'm going to give away something right now. That's right. The old guy is going to give away a couple movies. Uh, both brand new, factory sealed, both with digital copies. The first is a complete series of The Swamp Thing. Put out by DC, 
when a deadly illness strikes the townspeople of Marais, Louisiana. I love anything that's done in Louisiana. I used to live there for a couple of years, six years to be exact. And, uh, yeah, what a great atmosphere, just a great atmosphere kind of thing. Uh, I, this doesn't get great reviews. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm gonna, I, I have it. I'm going to watch it soon, but I had an extra copy. Thought I'd give this away to my loyal subscribers. And the other one is Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla, a reboot that is unquestionably Godzilla. Of course, it's got the digital code in there also. This is a uh, Blu-ray. kind of thought it was a 4K at first, but uh, it's a Blu-ray. Shin Godzilla. I already have, somehow I ended up with two copies of this, so my loss, your gain. So how are we going to do this, Geriatric Geek? Well, in the comments below, if you're interested in winning both of these, I'm gonna, these are both for one person. If you're interested in them, let me know down below in the comment, and we're going to use the secret code word of uh, swamp. Swamp. Use the word swamp. I'll use the comment picker. Let's see. Today is Monday. We'll let it run till probably Saturday or Sunday. And uh, yeah. So good luck, and uh, hope you enjoy whomever wins. So that's it from North Las Vegas. You guys keep smiling, keep having fun, keep making those positive alternative choices. Until next time. Peace.